regulation of respiration and respiratory disorders let us recall the basic terms of respiration and what happens if the alveolar membrane is thickened and what happens when there is a high availability of oxygen at the alveoli or less availability of carbon dioxide or more availability of carbon dioxide in the alveoli of lung across the alveolar membrane so coming to the exchange of gases that is external respiration is the process of transportation of air through the respiratory organs that is the respiratory air, uh, atmospheric air is being transported to lungs so here at the time of exchange of gases the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmospheric air is more whereas in the blood it is 40 mm of hg at the cells or tissue it is 40 mm of hg whereas the carbon dioxide have the partial pressure of 45 okay mm of hg and at the alveoli the partial pressure is less at tissues it is 45 mm whereas in the alveoli it is 40 mm of hg so these gases are being diffused across the diffusion membrane of alveoli as well as blood capillary the epithelium the two epithelia one is of alveoli the other one is of capillary and in between the basement membrane so the thickness of this alveolar membrane is 0.5 to 1 microns and this gives a very easy route for the diffusion of gases across alveoli so if suppose the thickness is being increased then that condition is called as edema and this decreases the diffusion of gases and thereby it leads to impairment in the transportation of gas and here the total alveolar surface for exchange so now if you see in the healthy human what is the total surface area for the exchange of gas means it is 145 square meters in emphysema there will be decrease in the total areolar surface area and again here there is impairment in the transportation of gas so at the time of ventilation that is breathing blood flow coupling that is it happens in between the lungs as well as the capillary so when there is a low oxygen level in the alveolus then it leads to vasoconstriction okay decreasing the volume of blood capillary when there is a high oxygen concentration in alveoli then that leads to vasodilation high carbon dioxide in alveoli dilates bronchioles low carbon dioxide in alveoli constrict bronchioles so these are the changes which occurs in the ventilation due to the availability of high oxygen and low oxygen high carbon dioxide and low carbon dioxide in the alveoli so now the internal respiration this is the respiration which happens in between the blood and the tissues so here the oxygen partial pressure if the blood is 104 mm of hg and in the tissues it is 40 mm of hg so the partial pressure in the arteries is more whereas in the veins it is 40 mm of hg and in the same way the carbon dioxide partial pressure is 45 mm of hg whereas in the blood it is 40 mm of hg regulation of respiration in humans there is the special respiratory rhythm is being maintained by the respiratory centers so the respiratory centers are being present in the medulla region in the pons veroli these are the regions where the respiratory centers are present and they control the rate of breathing so now coming to the neural mechanism which is present in the medullary respiratory center so the medullary respiratory center is responsible for controlling normal rhythm or normal breathing that is normal inhalation and normal exhalation okay 
Now here, this medullary respiratory center consists of the two groups, that is the dorsal respiratory group and ventral respiratory group. Or simply we can call it as inspiratory center and expiratory center. So what is the function of this dorsal respiratory group is, it is responsible for maintaining the rhythm of normal breathing, normal inspiration and normal expiration. During this process, the phrenic nerve and the intercostal nerves are being stimulated to give the information to the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles to undergo contraction. Okay, and this information is being carried for two seconds. So, at this period, the diaphragm as well as the external intercostal muscles undergo contraction so that the volume of lungs is increased and the lungs are being filled up with a maximum amount of air. And later on, the dorsal respiratory group become inactive for three seconds where there is relaxation of the diaphragm muscles and external intercostal muscles. So there is again the elastic recoil of the lungs thereby leads to normal expiration. So this normal breathing is under the control of dorsal respiratory group. Now the next one is ventral respiratory group. This ventral respiratory group is usually inactive at the time of normal breathing. It is active only during forceful expiration. Okay. So here when the person is forcefully expiring at that moment the ventral respiratory group is being activated or stimulated by the phrenic nerves or the intercostal muscles now give the stimulation to the internal intercostal muscles to undergo contraction. Okay, the internal intercostal muscles as well as the abdominal muscles are undergoing contraction. Thereby, the volume of lungs is even more decreased so that it gives forceful expiration. So, in the normal resting stage, the normal breathing is 12 times per minute. Due to drug overdose, it causes suppression of inspiratory center. So, the rhythm is altered. In the next type of respiratory center is pons. The pons consists of pneumotaxic center and apneustic center. The function of pneumotaxic center is to inhibit the medulla. That is, it inhibits inspiratory rhythm. Okay, due to this, what happens in the person means uh, inspiratory rhythm. Okay. Due to this, when there is inhibition of this inspiratory rhythm, it causes a shorter breath or quicker breaths or shallow breaths. And coming to the apneustic center, it is functioning reverse to that of Pons respiratory center. Okay, it stimulates the medulla or the inspiratory rhythm to cause longer, deeper and slower breaths. And now, the control of rate and depth of breathing. So, the breathing rate is under the stimulation or inhibition from the medulla. But the breath, breathing depth is under the control of activation of inspiration muscles. Hearing broad reflects the stretch of visceral pleura that the lungs have been expanded. And this is under the control of vagus now and the hypothalamic control of breathing that is at the time of emotion pain okay all these are also under the control of medulla so the hypothalamic control or the nerve impulses from hypothalamus and limbic system also stimulate the respiratory center allowing emotional stimuli to alter resp respiration as 
at the time of laughing, crying, okay, all this. And this uh, cortex control, voluntary breathing, okay, it is being altered at the time of talking or singing. The cerebral cortex also controls the respiration, that is the voluntary breathing at the time of singing and talking. So the chemical mechanism of ventilation or respiration. So here the chemoreceptors are the specialized neurons which are being present and they respond to changes in the chemicals in solution. And the chemicals are nothing but the CO2. When the concentration of a CO2 is being increased, that is the partial pressure of CO2 is raised in the body that is being received by these uh, chemoreceptors and that uh, stimulate the ventral respiratory group or the dorsal respiratory group or apneustic center to function accordingly. So the central chemoreceptors are being located in the medulla region whereas the peripheral chemoreceptors are the large vessels of the neck. Now, here if you see the partial pressure of carbon dioxide along with high H plus ions are the stimulants for the chemoreceptors. High H plus ions means decrease in pH. So, here the peripheral chemoreceptors are associated with aortic arc. So, here you can see or aortic body and carotid arteries. They can also recognize the changes in carbon dioxide and H plus ions and send necessary signals to the respiratory center for immediate actions. So here the oxygen in the regulation of respiratory rhythm is quite significant because of as a shaped curve at any partial pressure of oxygen that is above 80 mm of Hg. So, this is how the chemical mechanism is being helping in controlling the respiratory rhythm center. And the overview of chemical effects, when there is increased carbon dioxide, more H plus ions, the breathing effect is also increased. Decreased carbon dioxide or less H plus ions decreases the breathing effect. Slight decrease in oxygen also affects the carbon dioxide system. Large decrease in oxygen increases ventilation. Decreased pH, more H plus ions also increase breathing. Increased pH decreases the breathing effect. So now coming to the disorders of respiratory system. The first more severely affected lung disease is lung cancer. Now it is the small cells which are being uh, undergoing uncontrolled cell division and this cancer may be in the carcinoma or adenocarcinoma or large cell carcinoma or small cell lung cancer. So here in lung cancer there is uncontrolled division of cells and this leads to constant chest pain shortness of breath, wheezing and the continuous uh, lung infections like pneumonia or bronchitis, the blood or rust colored sputum is being released outside. So the risk factors, what are the major reasons for this lung cancer is smoking, okay, or inhaling the smoke, okay, and marijuana cigarettes, inflammation due to TB or pneumonia, Exposure to the several occupational uh, disorders like exposing to asbestos, talcum powder, okay, uh, to the iron or silicon that is asbestos, silicosis, siderosis. Okay, they also lead to black lung disease due to the high accumulation of coal dust into the uh, lungs so who are working in coal mines. So these are also called as occupational respiratory disorders. So they lead to different types of infections and the person should be treated with bronchodilators and antibiotics and thereby to treat the second underlying secondary infection. Okay, so um, there are many reasons like cancer causing agents like arsenic, vinyl chloride, 
All these are the chemicals which causes cancer. So the diagnosis of lung cancer is chest x-ray, bronchoscopy, sputum test, or media stenoscopy, needle biopsy. Treatment is either surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy. So now the most common one is chronic obstructive respiratory disorder that is asthma. It is the chronic inflammatory lung disease involving recurrent breathing problems. The characteristics of asthma are three airway problems. That is either it may be the obstruction or it may be inflammation or hyper responsiveness, hypersensitivity we can say. Immune system is overreacting on exposure to dust molecules. So you can see <coughs> how the bronchioles and the alveoli are being present. At the time of asthma, there will be air walls filled up by mucus. The muscle cell around this undergo contraction. And these airways are also swollen. So the chronic bronchitis is the long-term inflammation of bronchi. So here you can see in the bronchi, it leads to inflammation. Okay, now it causes increased production of mucus and several other changes also occurs in the bronchi. And the other one is, so here this bronchi leads to cough with thick mucus. Okay, the diameter of this bronchi also decreases because due to overproduction of mucus. And the next one is pulmonary embolism is again a severe life-threatening condition. Where the pulmonary artery by foreign mat is blocked by the foreign mat matter like blood clot, thrombus or pieces of fat which causes impairment in the transportation of air. Pneumonia is a respiratory disorder which is being caused by inflammation of lungs by microbial infection or by chemical irritants. So, this is of two types. They are the lobar pneumonia which affects the lobes of lungs or bronchial pneumonia which affects the bronchi. So, this may be caused either by bacteria, viral or pneumonia. Okay, so it may be the pneumonic. So, here you can see there is the block in the alveolar sacs. Okay, so this is responsible for causing impairment in diffusion of gases. So here in this picture, you can see the clear inflammation which is being occurring in the uh, uh, lungs. Okay, it may be in the lobes or it may be in the bronchi. So symptoms are shaking, chills and high temperature, severe chest pain, cough and uh, uh, sputum is being released or mucus. Okay, rapid pulse, rapid breathing, bluish colored lips in case of severe pneumonia. Treatment is by giving antibiotics. Okay, or viral pneumonia. This is no clear or uh, there is no complete treatment for viral pneumonia. So, the next one is pulmonary emphysema. It is a chronic lung condition in which alveoli and aid sacs are destroyed or they may be narrowed, collapsed or they may be stretched. Okay, or over inflated. So, this is also being caused due to excessive smoking. The lung shows larger but fewer alveoli which are more fibrous and less elastic. Okay, emphysema reduces the elastic quality of the lungs and total surface of alveoli. Okay, so this partial pressure in the arteries will be lower than normal. It is also harder to exhale because of loss of elasticity and therefore atrial carbon dioxide level is being increased. If you like the video, share and subscribe. This is Pravalika signing off.